Soul Twin Audios, stories created solely with the vintage soul in mind. Modern day era driving you up a wall? Time travel not likely in your future? Then follow me for a healthy offering of yesteryear with old time radio theater. Your remedy for unwanted 21st century pain. O-T-R-T-S-T-A. What store can I connect you with today? Yeah, can I get one of those burgers with mustard, a uh, pickle on the side, and some of your famous family-style fries? One helping of short order coming right up. And don't forget the ketchup. Soul Twin Audios presents a recreation of Short Order, starring Joe Stofko, Skyman, and Robin Robbins. A remarkable tale of suspense. Thank you very much. Come back. Bailey's Diner, this is Mr. Bailey speaking. Oh, oh. I'm sorry, you're just a little late on that. I hired a fry cook day before yesterday. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell the newspaper to stop running that ad until this morning. I got a good man. No. Uh, No, one man is all I need. I just got a small place here. That's all right. Goodbye. (laughs) Oh, you see that, Johnson? You better keep on your toes. Plenty of people after your job. Oh, Mr. Bailey. Well, if you're not careful, you know, uh, something might... uh... Well, what's the matter? Don't you want to take my money? Huh? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, yes, yes, of course, sir. That's 75 out of one. Uh, by one, thank you. Okay. Hey, Johnson. Johnson, did you see that man's face? Yeah, you're telling me. It's enough to haunt your dreams. Kind of made you nervous, didn't he, Mr. Bailey? Well, after all, it's kind of a shock to look up and see. Yeah, I noticed you hung kind of close to that gun you keep under the cash register. Who did I? Automatic reflex, I guess. Oh, poor guy. I ought to be ashamed. Probably got that way in an explosion accident or something, you know? Yeah. Looks like a plastic surgery job. Only some doctor like Frankenstein must have done the surgery. Here you are. Enjoyed it. Oh, thank you. Come back. Of course. He liked your cooking, too, Johnson. Two deluxe sandwiches, two coffees. (laughs) You know, that's not bad. Right. Seems to me business has been picking up ever since you started working here. Just thought you'd like to know. Thanks a lot. You like this work, Johnson? Yeah, it'll do. He always kind of get to me sometime and... When the rush hour starts in half an hour, I can't pretend I'll be liking it, but it's all right. Sure. Well, someday you'll have a place of your own. Be your own boss. Never get anywhere working for someone else, you know. 
Well, I'm doing okay now, Mr. Bailey. Yeah, you'll never go hungry for lack of a job. You're too good a cook. That's your own business. Now, you take me. I'm doing pretty well, if I do say so myself. People come here to eat, and I see that they get to. Yeah, it makes you feel pretty good having your own place. Makes the saving and scraping seem sort of worthwhile. You seem to get the business. Of course, you got a terrific location. Well, this place has a name that means something. At least I think it has. As a matter of fact, there was a man in here trying to buy it just last week. Is that so? That's right. Real estate agent, name of Sloan, had a customer. Well, who's his customer? Oh, I don't know. I told him I didn't want to sell. Couldn't afford to. I'm not in a position to retire. The way things are, it'd be too hard to start up somewhere else. Uh-oh. Here we go again. Good evening. Evening. Yes, sir. Uh, what'll it be? Oh, uh, the special, I reckon. Right. And, uh, coffee. Oh, good evening, sir. Is it still chilly out? Yeah, a little. But thought some of your chili would warm me up. <laughs> get it? Yeah, I get it. I get it. Chili coming up! Baby's place. Oh, Virginia. What? 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 All the windows? Well, who could possibly... Well, where were you? Well, now, why would anyone want to... Oh, no. No, none of those kids would do a thing like that. They're nice kids. Yeah, uh, hoodlums, I guess. Well, I don't know what you can do. Got no witnesses or anything. You sure it was rocks, huh? Well, I guess there's nothing you can do. Well, I wish I could, too, but I gotta stay here. All right, dear. Yes, all right. Goodbye. Bad news, Mr. Bailey? Oh, it's the darndest thing ever. Hoodlums or something just broke every window in my house. I, I don't know what to think. Hey, Bailey, is this some kind of new bread you got here? It's better than usual. Oh, you like it? Yeah. Well, it costs a little more, but... Good evening. Uh, <clears throat> good evening. Hello. Uh... Yes, sir? What'll it be? Hamburger and coffee. Right. How will you have the hamburger? Well done. Cream in the coffee? No. Black. Yeah. Right. Hey, Bailey, uh, come here a minute. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, pardon me, will you please? Hey, did you see the face on that fella that came in a minute ago? Yes, I did. It's pretty bad, isn't it? Bad? I'll say. Boy, I can't stand a lot of things, but that really gets me. Why, I've left half my meal on my plate. I was enjoying myself until that came in and sat over there. Now I don't want anything more. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, look, uh, don't pay me. No, I no, it's not your fault. It may be mine. Gee, how do you suppose he got that way? That's the worst I've ever saw. It's too bad, whatever happened. Sure, yeah, too bad. Ketchup. Okay, here you are. What? This little paper cup? Where's the bottle? Sorry, but ketchup is hard to get. That's all we can serve anybody. Oh, profiteers. Anything more? No. Okay. Your check and pay at the desk. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Bailey. Yes, Johnson? How's your luck? Oh, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Why? The way I figure it. Somebody around here is sure going to need plenty of luck. Why? I don't know. I just got a feeling. That isn't bad luck for somebody sitting back there at the counter. I'll eat this grill here and I never saw a recipe for making a steel grill tender.
We better order some more pork tomorrow, Mr. Bailey. Running low, are we, Johnson? Yeah, a little. I'm sure we'll be needing it. All right, all right. I'll make a note of it. Well, lucky we got any unspoiled meat left after the guy was in here twice yesterday. I thought the milk would sour. Just like that when he looked at it. Ah, now, Johnson, you shouldn't talk like that. He can't help it. You know he can't. We should feel sorry for him, not joke about it like that. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. You gotta have some sympathy for a guy like that. Just the same, I hate to look at it. Uh, I guess we'll have to look at it some more. I think he's coming up to the door now. Ugh. Hello? Yes, sir. What'll it be? Hamburger and coffee. Make the coffee black. Um, yeah. Right. Make that hamburger well done. Okay. <laughs> oh, a <laughs> good evening. Yes, sir. What for you? Why, uh, I'll have a. Uh... Oh, holy. How's that? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. I, uh, in fact, I don't think I want anything. I just realized I have, uh, an appointment. Just forget it. Well, what do you know? Uh, your hamburger, mister. And your coffee. Ketchup, please. Okay. Still no bottle? No bottle, sorry. Here. You go buy an extra bottle. Put it back on the shelf. Just for me. You gonna eat here some more? Yeah. I like this place. Go on and take that and see that you get some good ketchup, too. Ah, uh, it ain't that, mister. It ain't the money. Can't buy this stuff when they don't stock it. Uh, I better ask Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey? Yes, Johnson? Would you tell him? I just gave your man some money to buy a bottle of ketchup, but he doesn't want to take it. Well, you, you see, sir, it's not that we can't afford to buy ketchup. No, indeed. We want to please the customer, something people have forgotten to do nowadays, but ketchup is very hard to get just now, and we have to ask our customer to just bear with us. Uh, you keep your money. I like plenty of ketchup. Nothing like ketchup, I always say. There ought to be enough in that paper cup. Uh, won't that do you? Not quite. Any chance of a refill? I'm afraid that's all we can allow. Gentleman says he's gonna eat here regular. What? I said that. Oh, just a moment. Uh, good evening. Can I do something for you? I think I'll have the... Uh, on second thought, I've changed my mind. I'm not hungry anymore. We hadn't finished our discussion. Yeah, as I was saying, Mr. Bailey, it looks like we got ourselves a regular customer. Three evenings that he's been eating here, Johnson, and I wish you'd take a look at the figures. Take last night. Ordinarily, there'd be 10 to $20 worth of business just between 6 to 6.30 alone. From 6 to 10, how much? $1.35. Yeah, I know. Some of them won't even order. Some of them take a few bites and quit. At least it's not the food. We can be thankful for that. Hey, tell me, Johnson. How can you stand it over there in front of him all the time? Oh, well, mostly I keep looking someplace else. That's why I took down the mirror. For a while I thought I'd just walk along and not look at him. But I couldn't help looking in the mirror every now and then. So I think maybe the customers could stand it better without the glass too. If they get to the sitting down stage. Yeah, if they do. Well, anyway, I took it down. Might help if he didn't get up every now and again and walk over to the door to look out. People can't help seeing him then. Yeah, takes him a long time to eat, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Say, I've got an idea. What's that? When he comes in...
Uh, <laughs> evening. Hello? Yes, sir? The usual. Right. Oh, uh, by the way, Mr. Uh, uh, what's your name? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, as I was saying, neighbor, we, uh, we make a practice here to, uh, for our special guests now, our special customers, not just anybody, mind you, but for our special customers uh, of, uh, of sending meals out. Now, I was thinking, since you've become one of our regular customers, that perhaps you'd appreciate it if I send your evening meal over to you every day at your room. Uh, how does that strike you? No, thanks. I'd rather eat here. But, but uh, we, we don't have any comfortable chairs. There's no jukebox, no radio. That's okay. Don't miss them anyway. Well, it's not very comfortable. A lot of food odor in the air. You know, sometimes I get sick of it myself. I like it. Not too many people around. Nice place. Suits me. Then you're not interested. That's the idea. Hamburger and coffee. How about... Yeah, the ketchup. Here it is. Good. Nothing like ketchup, I always say. By the way... Yeah? Look for me about noon tomorrow. I think I'll be taking lunch with you from now on. Every day. Johnson, I'm at my wits, and uh, what are we going to do? I don't know. I got no more ideas. Two weeks now, and we're losing money every day. I could cook it so you wouldn't want to eat it. You've tried that, haven't you? Yeah, twice. And it didn't work? Yeah, that's right. I don't know what we're going to... Oh, oh, just a minute, Johnson. Okay, I'll check on the Bunsen boner. Hello, Bailey's place. Oh, yeah, yeah, dear. Huh? Oh, no, well, you must have misplaced it, honey. Every place? Well, how much was in it? Oh, no. Well, what are we going to do for the rest of the week? But I can't, honey. I really can't. Oh, about three bucks or something. I don't know. It's just dropped off during the last week. Oh, no. He's fine. Don't say that, honey. There's nothing the matter with Johnson, and I am not going to get a new cook. What? Well, I haven't told you, but, well, why don't you cut down on a few things once in a while? There he is. Now look, I got an idea. You back me up? What is it? Well, I'll try it. If you don't like it, don't say nothing. Like I said, Mr. Bailey, this Hello. guy was a pretty game fighter. Didn't have a thing but a... Mind I'll... if I butt in? I'd like to eat. Uh, you bring your lunch with you? What's that? If you brought your lunch, okay. Lay it on the counter and eat it. Don't be funny, Johnson. Bring me the usual. I got other things to do. What other things? I don't see any other customers. Want me to call the boss? Look, mister, I don't like you, see? You go someplace else and eat. We'll see about that. Hey, Bailey. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? This moron you call a cook says he won't serve me. Yes. Well, do something about it. What do you want me to do? Tell him to serve me or else have him fired. Johnson's a good cook. Good cooks are scarce nowadays. What is this? Are you standing up for him? I just told you good cooks are hard to get. What about your customers? Well, it's too bad, but... Uh... I see. Now look, both of you. I came in here to get something to eat, and I'm going to get it if I have to sit here all night. Suit yourself. Ah, uh, I'll get it. Bailey's place. Yes, yes, I am, dear. But what? Wrecked? Where? Were you in it? Were you hurt? In front of the house. Oh, 
I don't know what's happening, Virginia. It just seems like every time I... Of course I'm glad you were in the house when it... Well, how bad was it? Almost a complete wreck? Well, could they find out anything from the driver of the other car? Did, did he have insurance? No, no, they never do, do they? What? No, I'm all right, dear. I am almost out of my mind, is all. But it's getting so I'm afraid to answer the phone. Well, we'll just have to do without a car, that's all. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Mr. Bailey? Yes? Well, what's the matter, Mr. Bailey? Real bad news? Oh, wrecked my car right in front of my own house. Had no insurance, of course. No money to pay for it. Oh, that's tough, sir. That's tough. Him. Him. Look at him. Still sitting there, waiting. I'll have to think of something, but now I can't seem to think at all. Yeah, I'm stopped too. Boy, you sure get the luck, don't you? What's the matter? I never used to have luck like this. Just, just lately. Just, uh, just since he started coming in here. Yeah, it could be. Looks like bad news right from the start to me. There he sits. If only we could get him out of here once and for all. Hey, wait a minute. You go to the door and see if Ryan's outside. If he is, call him in, would you? All right. I wouldn't, but okay. Right outside. Well, Ryan! Would you come here a minute? Okay. Mr. Bailey wants to see you. What can I do for you, Mr. Bailey? See that man sitting there at the counter, Ryan? I want him either arrested or thrown out. I don't care which. Is that so? Giving you trouble, is he? Hey, you! You talking to me? Nobody else. Come here. What do you want? Well, Mr. Bailey wants a charge. What's this? All I do is come in here to eat. Look at him, Ryan. I am. Ooh, not very pretty, is he? Officer, the law doesn't give you the right to criticize a man's face. Ah, I'm sorry, mister. Well, now, Mr. Bailey. Every day he comes in here two or three times. I can't get anyone to come near the place while he's here. He stays and stays. He drives off most of my business away. I have to eat, same as anybody else. Have you done anything bad? Getting tough? Insulting people? Disturbing the peace? Well, no. All I do is come in and eat. Look. We reserve the right to refuse service to any customer. Uh, I don't know, Mr. Bailey. That's all very well, but technically speaking... What do you mean? He means that even if you don't like it, you can't run me out if I mind my own business. It means you can't run me out if I ask you to serve me. Well, how about that? And if I ask you for something to eat and offer you money for it, you gotta sell it to me. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, you better... Or I'll have you in court before you know it. Afraid he's right about that, Mr. Bailey. Well, all right. Sorry I can't help you, Mr. Bailey. Is there anything else? No, no. I better be getting on then. Good night. Well, how about it? All right, all right. Go sit down. Johnson, get him whatever he wants. Okay. I am not going to answer it. I'm not going to answer it. Mr. Bailey, the phone. You busted it. I don't care. Mr. Bailey, put my gun down. What are you going to do? You'll see. Now, look here, you... I can be pushed just so far. Now either you get out of this place and don't ever come back, or as sure as I'm standing here, I'm going to pull this trigger. Go away. I'm hungry. Did you hear what I said? I hear you. Now go away. I'm going to count three. One. Go away. Two. Three. Coffee. Black. I, I can't believe it. I shot you point blank. I got... Good Lord. 
Don't forget the ketchup. <laughs> well, you got the lay of the place now, Mr. Tanner. Think you are making any changes? No, no. Bailey had a good thing here. Better leave it just the way it was. We'll hold the trade easier if we do. How did he seem when the deal was closed? I can't say. I let the lawyers handle everything. You took a beating on the deal. Well, I don't know you. No, not too much. I figure he recovered about 70% of his investment. He was lucky I felt sorry for him. You didn't talk to him at all, huh? Oh, no. No, didn't even see him. You think he'd know you even without the makeup? Maybe. No use taking any chances, huh? Luckily, I changed the bullets in that gun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad I foresaw that possibility. You might say I saved your life, huh? You might. Don't worry, Johnson. You'll be taken care of. I'm not worrying. Never had a reason to yet. Right? No, but just for your information, Johnson. We haven't committed any crime. We didn't take this place away from Bailey by force. We didn't swindle him. I paid money right on the line for it. Just remember that. Oh, I will. Oh, a customer. Why, it's Mr. Bailey. C -c Come right in. Hello, Johnson. You know Mr. Tanner, don't you? He bought the place. I never met him. I'm glad to know you. A pleasure, Mr. Bailey. There's something familiar about you. Maybe I did meet you someplace. I was in once or twice. Looked the place over before I had Sloan talk to you. Oh, that's it. Uh, how how you making out? Uh, just getting started. Sort of breaking Mr. Tanner in, you might say. Well, I hope you have better luck than I did. I was doing fine until this man started coming in. Johnson knows the man, I mean. Bad luck in person. If he ever comes back, you just better close up and go home. Is that so? Yes, that's right. Hey, it's a wonder I have any mind left. To tell you the truth... I'm not even sure I do. Uh, Mr. Bailey, would you let me fix you something while you're in here? Huh? Oh, no thanks. I'm not hungry. We got some good steak. No oh, thanks, Johnson. Not even steak. Okay. You're the boss. Boss? Uh, no. Not anymore. But I would like to step behind the counter one last time, just to sort of look around. Uh, do you mind, Mr. Tanner? No. Go right ahead. Thanks. Well, you haven't changed anything, I see. Not a thing. We intend to operate the same way you did. I think it'll pay. Oh, thanks for the compliment. But I hope you don't draw my luck. Uh, how about some coffee, Mr. Bailey? You look tired. Coffee? <laughs> well, that sounds like a good idea. Don't mind if I do. Yours is cream and sugar, right? No, no thanks. Black this time. Hey, say, this coffee is hot. Yeah, I forgot to turn the burner back and the whole tank is plenty hot. I'm going to let it cool down. It's too hot for me. I'll just take one last look at things. Things I won't be seeing for a while, I guess. Buns, butter pats, coffee, cream. You know, it's funny how you miss things like these. Mustard, ketchup. Ketchup? <laughs> Where did you get all this ketchup, Johnson? Why, I... I ordered those. Ordered them? Well, <laughs> so did I. But I never even got a look at a bottle of ketchup. You're lucky. All in knowing how, I guess. Yeah, well, I guess you're right. I rather like it myself, you know. Nothing like ketchup, I always say. What? What was that? I, I said I'm rather fond of ketchup. Fond of ketchup? Ketchup? I think I know who you are now, Tanner. I think I know who you are. That, that face. Sure. Sure, that face. Makeup, wasn't it? That face. And Johnson had to be in on it too with you, didn't he? Johnson helped you, didn't he? He fixed the gun, didn't he? Well, didn't he, Tanner? Bailey, 
Now, wait a minute. I can explain. Oh, now you admit it. I'm telling the truth. Isn't that so, Tanner? Hey, Bailey! Bailey, stop! Pull him off, Mr. Tanner. I'll go get a cop. Police! Ryan, help! Police! Coffee! Coffee! You always take it black! <laughs> Ryan, come quick! Mr. Tanner! <laughs> Good Lord, his face! Hey, now what is this? Oh, it's all right, Ryan. Uh, there's nothing wrong, Ryan. I mean, nothing really wrong. <laughs> That's not his real face, Ryan. He likes it that way. Don't let him fool you. <laughs> what else do you want? Oh, yes, ketchup. Plenty of ketchup. Nothing like ketchup, I always say. Nothing like ketchup. Short Order was written by John F. Souter as a radio play for the program Suspense and originally aired 76 years ago on August 16, 1945. This recreation was produced and directed by Rachel Pulliam for Soul Twin Audio's Old Time Radio Theater range. Featured in our cast in order of appearance were yours truly Sharon Grunwald as announcer, Joe Stofko as Bailey, Skyman as Johnson, Robin Robbins as The Stranger, Greg Gidley as The First Customer, Brad Colebrook as The Second Customer, and Nick Dunlap as Officer Ryan. The suspense theme was composed by Bernard Herman and reimagined by David Krauss, with original music composed by Dr. Ross Bernhardt. Sound effects were provided by freesound.org. Soul Twin Audios is copyrighted by Rachel Pulliam in 2021.